Welcome back everybody to another Swift programming tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to go over the guard statement. A quick definition. A guard statement, like an if statement, executes statements depending on the boolean value of an expression. You use a guard statement to require that a condition must be true in order for the code after the guard statement to be executed. Unlike an if statement, a guard statement always has an else clause. The code inside the else clause is executed if the condition is not true. One of the best ways to understand the guard is to see some actual examples. So let's go ahead and create some of those examples now. Let's go ahead and create a division function. It will take a numerator of type double and a denominator of type double. Now, inside the function curly brackets, we're going to use our guard, and we want to guard against or to make sure that the denominator is not zero, because we know that we can't have a zero in the denominator or divide by zero. So we're going to type out guard denominator not equal to zero. Now, as we mentioned in our definition, the guards always have an else. So we're going to type out else. If the denominator is zero, we want to go ahead and display a message that says denominator cannot be zero. Then we're going to use our return and only the return to exit the scope or the function. So let's put that note right here. Now, if our guard is successful, Let's go ahead and put our code for that here after this curly bracket. So if the denominator is not zero, let's create our result, which will be the numerator divided by the denominator. Now, let's just use a print to display the result. Let's go ahead and call our division function. For the numerator, let's put in 10. And for the denominator, let's put in 5. So in this case, when we run this, we should get back 2 down here in the console. Let's go ahead and run it. And we get what we expected, 2. Now, to test our guard, let's put a 0 in the denominator. And since we don't want to allow 0 for the denominator, we should expect to get this message here. Let's go ahead and run it. And we get our message, denominator cannot be zero. For our next example, let's use guard with optionals. If you'd like more information about optionals, please feel free to check out my tutorial on Swift optionals. We're gonna go ahead and create a function again. And in this case, the function is going to help us create a user profile with a first name, a last name, and an email. So we'll just call this create profile. And this function will take the arguments, first name of type string, optional, last name, type string, optional, and email, type string, optional. Once again, inside the curly brackets, we're going to use our guard. We're going to use our optional, so we're going to say let first equals first name. So if the value for first name is available and it is not nil, we're going to go ahead and assign it to this temporary constant, and then that will be available for use within our function. We're going to do the same thing for the last name and for the email. Once again, we're going to put in our else. Now, if we don't get what we want for any of those values or they're nil, we're just going to display a message that says, please enter all information. And once again, we're going to use the return to exit the scope or the function. Next, if we do get the values that we want for the first name, last name, and email, we're just simply going to use a print to display those. We'll go ahead and just say profile created for, let's use string interpolation, 
and we'll put in the first name, the last name, and the email. Now remember the variables that we're going to use are these temporary constants here, here, and here. Now let's go ahead and call that function, create profile. Let's just put in a name. We'll say Bob Smith with an email of bobsmith at email.com. Let's go ahead and comment this part out here and here. Let's give ourselves just a little bit more room and let's run it. Okay, so you can see down here in the console, we get profile created for Bob Smith with the email bobsmith at email.com. Now, if for some reason, one of these values did end up being nil, like that, we should get this message here. Okay, let's run it. And we get the correct message. Please enter all info. Let's go over one more example using an iOS app. Okay, so we've already gone ahead and created our interface here. So we put in a UI text field here, and we put in our button here, and we put in a UI label here. And when we run this, what we want this to do is take a name and then hit submit and then put that name here for the label. Now, one problem you might run into is if this is blank and someone hits submit, you want to be able to handle that. Now, one way you can do that is to use the guard. So we created a function. We use our guard, let name. Then we use our text field, dot text. And we want to make sure that that field is not empty. And to do that, we use the exclamation for not name dot is empty. Now, if it is empty, we use label dot text and we want to put in the message invalid. Once again, we use the return to exit the scope. Now, if we do get what we want, we want to just go ahead and assign that value, the string, or whatever data is put into that field, to our label. Okay? So we created that function, and then we put the function inside our button. So when the button is pressed, it will execute the function. Let's go ahead and run this and test it. Okay, so we have our text field. Let's go ahead and put in a name. Let's hit submit, and as we expected, we get Bob Smith. Now, as we mentioned, one problem could be that this is left blank, and then someone hits submit. So if we do that, recall over here in our function, we want invalid to be assigned to the label. Okay, let's hit submit, and we get invalid. Now once again, let's just put in a name and hit submit, and we get what we expected. Okay, that's all we have for this Swift tutorial on the guard statement. We will be doing many more Swift tutorials in the near future. Join us for those, and we'll see you next time.